these things from Nintendo recently, and, and this is captured from a few different places. So uh, during the week, we've had Banjo and Kazooie and Blast Corpse listed as releasing on the 30th of December on that day, saying it was going to be released that day. And it went so far that Nintendo actually had to come out and say that they were not going to be released uh, uh, on that schedule. I think that that was a wording, something like that. They didn't say it wasn't going to be released at all. It's just, it was not going to be released as it said in that schedule. And then we also had new Pokemon Snap, which we really haven't heard much about since its trailer. And it's basically available TBA at the moment. We don't even know a release date. As on their USA shop, on their website, it said available now. You know what's really weird about new Pokemon Snap? (laughs) Yeah. Like, I... Well, not really weird. I just found it weird was... We, we, you know, find some B-roll footage for people watching the video version of this uh, podcast. Yeah. And I couldn't find that trailer on the official Nintendo channel on YouTube. <laughs> I'm like, weird. wait. It, it's on the what? Pokemon channel. Yeah, but it just felt weird that Nintendo didn't have it. I know. They do that with Smash Brothers sometimes as well. It's yeah. Really anyway, anyway, it was just a small thing. Yeah. So, I mean, let, let's tackle maybe the Pokemon Snap one first. Do, do you get the sense that... What, what, what is your view, Swinny, on this one? Because I've got a view on it. I think from what I gather from what you've said previously, I think you're on the money. I think they're going to surprise drop this game in a direct very soon. Yeah. Yeah. I, I you know, cause COVID has affected Nintendo as it's affected everyone and Nintendo's handled it very differently to other companies. They're a very private company generally. And, you know, we haven't had a direct, we, did we even have one direct in 2020 about video games? I don't think so. We just had lots of smaller ones. Uh, yeah, but not like a Nintendo Direct, right? No. Well, yeah, not not like a what would normally expect. Also, with with this game, unless they're doing some big stuff to it that I... Obviously, we don't know much about it, but if it's anything like the original Pokemon Snap, I reckon this game, like, it, it wouldn't take that long to pull this game together. So I reckon that that's probably... I reckon that's probably done. I reckon I'll release it. Yeah, I think it's done as well. And I I think what's happening with both of these things, because when they load these things into their own systems, they'd have to load it with a date. That's just always the way that you code these things. And normally it would just be, you know, the end of a quarter, the end of a half year, the end of a full year. And it feels like they've loaded these games in and they've put it as, oh, you know, (laughs) let's put it way in the future. Like, you know, the end of 2020. (laughs) forgot about it? No, well, more that like because of the delays probably it's been delayed for more than a year or like around a year. Then they've gone, oh shoot, like we haven't actually updated it in the databases properly. (laughs) So I I think for sure new Pokemon Snap is coming like in March, Feb. Mm. Well, this year, sorry now. Um, Now with Banjo-Kazooie Blast Corpse, that one was so weird because it had their full names, like the proper Japanese titles for those games. And it actually listed the publisher as Microsoft Japan. Huh. Uh, like, I mean, that can't be, like, Nintendo doesn't make mistakes like that normally. It feels like they've either had conversations with Microsoft to get some of those rare replay games onto the Switch, and that's all loaded in the background, ready to go. Maybe they've, you know, agreed or not agreed, and, you know, they haven't done anything with it. But, I mean, if I had to bet on this, I, I reckon Benjo kazooie is coming out this year on the Switch. Look, I've I'm surprised it hasn't happened yet. Like out mm, of fair cool. everything, you know, the fact that they put other Microsoft published games on there, but not mm. the the games that would make probably make the most sense, because those versions of Banjo Kazooie and Banjo Tooie that they put out on 360 that were part of the rare, uh, rare replay collection are amazing. Like they run so smooth, they look great. That they did so much texture work. The, and they're, they're the definitive way to play those games, and I'm including they're amazing. They're playing amazing. them on the actual console because they run it. Is it 60 FPS or at least 30? Right? They run at 60. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I don't. The, I don't definitive. know if they drop at all, but considering that, especially Banjo Tooie would sometimes run <laughs> like less than 15 <laughs> frames a second. It was yeah, ridiculous. 12 frames a second. Yeah. <laughs> ridiculous. Um, to play those games like in that glorious frame rate and looking great because they did. As I said they did a lot of work. Um, and at the time, and, and Perfect Dark was the same, like, people, I think a lot of people slept on them at the time because they're like, oh, they're just, they just re-released them. No, they re-released, like, great versions of those games. With mm. And 
with the benefit of modern control schemes and things and and tighter camera control you know that they're what mario 3d all stars probably should have been you know yeah. so um and I'll, I'll be the defender of that game i think it's fine <laughs> i've been playing it it's like i get that people it's not what people wanted but if you just consider it what it is it's such a good version of the game i think it's the best version of mario 64 you can play i love those What's games from, what, what that they could have they could have they could have I love I love those games, but they could have done so much more with them. I don't think I agree, but ju- judge it for what it is, not what it's not. No, I'm judging it for what it's not. <laughs> <laughs> look, look, and and to be fair, I said to my wife, I go, it does like when I look at it, and I go, oh man, imagine if they put this into the Mario Odyssey engine, it would have been magical. No, but the not cam- even, I, the I camera don't even is a bit funky at times. Uh, yeah, the camera definitely, but just like make the games run like. At 60. 60. You know, yeah. like. Just... Which I haven't. No, but I haven't found that to be that jarring. Locked 30, I'm fine with. Like, I'd prefer 60, but lock 30 is fine. It's when it starts hmm. to dip that I really have issues. Yeah, anyway. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, this, like, and Blast Corpse. Blast Corpse was great as well. Yeah, don't sleep um, on that. Yeah. People. Blast Corpse is one of my favorite 64 games ever. And it held up when I was playing it. Now, I will say, if someone's playing it for the first time and doesn't know anything about it, maybe not so much, but it definitely held up from someone that played it back in the day. Mm. My prediction, they'll release these games, Banjo-Kazooie, Banjo-Tooie, Blast Corps, a few others, all individually, charge like 15 Australian dollars each, and they won't release Conker's Bad Fur Day, and people will whinge that, hey, they, you know, (laughs) Rare Replay, you know, it was five dollars and it has all of these games you're charging me fifteen dollars each and then people will buy it anyway well, that's way my more than, it's way more than five dollars but no well, when it came bought, out no but if you, if you bought out. rare replay now it's like cheap well yeah but these games will probably go on special for you know 250 later so oh, i don't know about that <laughs> you can't yeah. compare that <laughs> yeah i know but all i'm saying is people will whinge about the price of these games and they'll they'll release them individually but yeah it'd be fine and I, it's one of those things that if they do release Rare Replay on the Switch as a cart, that I'll also double dip and buy that as well. So <laughs> there you Chris go. Well, Microsoft. yeah, it'd have to be a very different version. Like, because that game is massive um, when you consider the 360 games and stuff. So mm. depends. Like, if they've released a specialized, like, oh, here's a col- Rare Collection, because I think calling it Rare Replay, you know, Thinks you're probably going to get everything that the Xbox One version had, but yeah, that uh, has that's fair. That's fair. that has perfect Dark Zero it has like all these three sixty. <laughs> probably games don't want that. Viva yeah. Pin, Viva, Rare replay, yeah, but Viva Pinata games it like had all the three sixty ones cameo mm. and all that as well. So. And it's funny because Microsoft, I believe it's still the case, their first million dollar, uh, sorry, million seller in Japan, and I believe only million seller in Japan that's from Microsoft is Minecraft. I don't believe they've ever made a game that sold more than a million in Japan outside of Minecraft. I, I think if they release like rare classic collection for the Switch, uh, I reckon that would sell a million in Japan. Like some of these games are pretty popular in Japan. Maybe, well. yeah. yeah. It's funny that their only million one is a game that they did technically didn't even originally make. They just bought it out. <laughs> yeah, well, it's, it's Microsoft Studios yeah. now. Uh, all right, let's get into the next story. So, Dbrand. 